Do you, can you see for the paper? <laughs> How do you think I read the first question? <laughs> Simon Richard asks, how did you meet? Ooh. Ooh. Hello folks. Hello. Uh, welcome to a little Q&A that we decided to put together with a whole bunch of questions that you guys have kindly asked us because we're on holiday. Yep, well not right now. Right now we're sat in our sofa. But we're going on holiday. We're going on holiday. <laughs> so we thought, you know what, we need a bit of a video to just sort of slot in that gap. Give us a week off of the YouTube train. <laughs> we split this up into three different sections. One of the questions is why I can't pronounce the word free. Three different, <laughs> three different sections. Number one, the content that we make, what's in it, what you're doing, where you're going, did you like that bit, did you do that bit? Number two, personal questions about us, because a lot of you ask personal questions about us. So I haven't seen these, these questions yet, no. And section number three, YouTube. How do you do YouTube? How do you do this? How do you do that? Why does that work on YouTube? Why does that not work on YouTube? What should I do about this on YouTube? Loads of those questions. So straight off, let's go straight in with section number one, content questions. Mm. T asks, how do you find the stuff you cover? Loads of different ways, loads of different resources we use from Railmap Online, old maps, scouring old maps, people send us in um, ideas for videos. Yeah, books. All sorts of books, yeah, good point. Any quirky idea that fits with our channel remit, mm. which is essentially a route. Our channel revolves around a route, whether it's a disused railway, disused canal, old maps, how they came together, that sort of thing. It's all about how, how people moved around um, over the last gazillion years. Gazillion? Gazillion. 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 Okay, what adventure are you most pleased with? By Toxophilite. What adventure are you most pleased with? I mean, loads There's of so really... Many. For me, it always has to be a one where I love doing the edit. For example, I don't know why, but the way in Aaron Canal really mm. stuck out for me because it all seemed to come together. It's a really wet and horrible day but it kind of all really pieced together really well. So that kind of works for me. That's a, a big tick for me is when something fits together perfectly. I love how it edits and it flows. Mm. So the way in Aaron Canal is probably one of my favorite. Um, what about you, anything? That you want? I think it's gotta be something where we find something unexpected. Yes. So I think where we think everything's gonna be destroyed and there's not gonna be anything there. And then we turn up and we're like, oh my God, there's stuff here. Yeah. One of my best ones was, was um, the um, granite trackway. Oh, the granite trackway, tra the Haytor granite trackway. Yeah, that because that was just amazing. It had been there for so yeah. long and it was just all there. And we could walk along it as if we were yeah. the trackway. I was, I was it surprised was amazing. by how much there was and yeah. you could still see the points and the junctions. Yes, exactly. That was amazing. That was very cool. Okay, Peter Turner has asked, what is your favourite topic? Canals, railways, maps or roads? I'm guessing yours is probably maps. I, I don't really mind. I love everything about the journey, the route, and why people chose that route. Whether it was an ancient trackway, a Roman road, yeah. what does that, we're just currently researching one now as we speak, Roman Road 164, and it's a complete mystery. Mm. Below, there's like a 10 mile section where it's a mystery. Did it go oh, this way? Oh, don't tell there? them now. So, lots of people have asked, when are we going to? Scotland, Yorkshire, Wales, everywhere. We've Norfolk, done, Suffolk. To be fair, we've done a lot of Wales. In the past. We've done a lot of South Wales. Yes, we do, we, we do like going to Wales quite regularly. So we do have a lot of plans. We're kind of having a more local six months for personal reasons, which we'll maybe come to later. But we're kind of having a more local time at the moment. But again, we'll give it six months and we plan to get back out again and do a lot of these, these sort of trips. Gaffy, where's my lighter? If you just, just check beside your um, sofa on the left, there's a, a little table, you know your little table? It's just on there. You've left it on the table next to the sofa. Betsy Johnson asks, What location surprised you the most? For you? For me, I think it's got to be Spetsbury. Because when we were first starting Every Disuse Station... That was our first trip. It was our Somerset first trip. And we just didn't really expect to see much. And that, that was the first ever station we've been to where we just went up some stairs or down some stairs and it was all done up by the locals and it looked mm. amazing. It's the there's, first time I'd seen that. And there's another one of those in this, this, well, we may, you may have already seen it, the latest every issue station we did, Cheddar Valley Line, there's another one of those. Yes. For me, what's the area surprised me the most? Somewhere like, even though like as local to us as Savanac Forest mm. and the fact that you can still see a Roman road. Yeah. You can still see the shape of it and the, the ditches they put in either side. Things like that really surprised me where there's stuff that is 
over 1500 years old and it's, it's still, still there. there for you to go and find there's stuff that you can still find out and you can still contribute to the society less so with the railways because there's a lot of people that are still alive that saw the railways mm -hmm. the canals that sort of thing but there's always still a mystery to look at and i love that side of it so for me somewhere where you can find something you just think oh my god this is 2000 years old okay amy soika Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Health and safety considerations, what's the worst thing you've come across? That kind of type of ilk. Yeah, we don't go inside a whole bunch of dangerous places. We don't go in mines, we don't go in places which we know are gonna be dangerous. No. Yes, we go into old tunnels sometimes, but it's a bit of a rarity, isn't it? It is, and normally they're fairly well ventilated or yes. they've been open for a long time, so and you, you're not gonna come across anything Yeah, we, In fact, we did a video on this. We did a video, the Mapley Tunnel video, and I even titled mm. it, Are Abandoned Tunnels Dangerous? So you can get our opinion on that in that video, mm -hmm. but rest assured, we do a lot of research first. Um, one of the most dangerous places we went to was on the Whitby coastline, where there was, um, those really dangerous tunnels that we didn't go inside where we knew there's low oxygen because yes. they just cut straight into the shale. Oh yeah, of course. Do you yeah. remember? We yeah. stood outside and we said, this is where you don't go. Mm. But so we, we are sensible. We've got responsibilities. We've got children. We've got all sorts going on in our lives. So we do take care. Andrew Watts asks, what abandoned place would you love to go and see but you can't because of access? For me... Yeah, but you must have a well, list. Well, yeah, for me, it's most railways in this country where we live now yeah. because you know, if we do an every disuse station yes there's um a lot that you can go and do cycle lanes and, and walk walkways but there's so much where it just goes across a piece of land and there's nothing and you can't go on it you know you legally mm -hmm. can't get there so we top from station to station to station and try and find some old bits but really if you want to see the good stuff you've got a trespass we don't do that because we don't think it's the right thing to do yeah so we're going to move to scotland in a week's time andrew p any update on every disused station. Is it going to get trickier as you go further afield? Well, yeah, of course it will because we have to travel further, but we don't mind that because that's something we enjoy. But well, we have already done some distance ones anyway. Oh God, we've done loads in Scotland, we've done quite a few in Yorkshire, we've done yeah, quite exactly. a few in South Wales. But bear in mind, I had a look the other day and thought, I wonder how many every disused stations we've done in Hampshire against how many we need to do in Hampshire. And I thought we must be nearing all the ones in Hampshire where we kind of live. And we've still got oh, like we've got five, loads. we've got five more lines to do in Hampshire. It's probably about 50 to 60 more stations in our own oh, county. Okay. That's doable, isn't it? Uh, let alone going to Wiltshire, Dorset, Surrey, Oxfordshire, Berkshire, Gloucestershire, Somerset, which yeah. are all which in are our all, all in our local area. Yeah, they're not so, overnighters, are they? That's no. the point. We can't we've do got that, hundreds then. and hundreds of videos to do. Uh, Daniel Ack, favourite place to visit? Go. Hamburg Viaduct. Hamburg Viaduct's great because it was the biggest surprise for us because we, well, no one the surprise, we knew it was there, but you but still, it, still, it still takes just crept, crept up on you and it's just in there and it's just amazing and it's, it takes your breath away because you just, beautiful. you're walking through the woods and all of a sudden, just this wonderful viaduct and in the middle of the woods opens itself up. And if you go in four different seasons, you get four different views. Yes. Because we went in the summer and it was gorgeous and covered in greenery. We went in the winter before yep. and there's no greenery clearly and it's just there. It's gorgeous. There is another one actually in my head. The Ooze Valley Viaduct, that massive. I mean, it's, Ooze Valley is it's amazing, just it? yeah. astounding. Tremendous Lyrisk asks, is it frustrating when you go somewhere and there are no remains at all? We're kind of used to it now, to be honest. Yeah, this is why we don't do every disuse station every week because when we do an every disuse station, even if you have a good day, only 50% of the old stations are still there for you to see and enjoy and look at and, you know, you'll find yourself on a housing estate and yep. there was a railway here that went from here to here. And it's boring, you, know, you guys don't want that. Or a and supermarket it, car park. Supermarket car park is a classic, <laughs> isn't it? And the yep. railway went across from here to here. There's no point in us showing you that in it as a video. So yep. we want to give you guys some of the good stuff that you see and so you enjoy the video, you engage with it. AVS asks, have you been, I think this is a biased question, have you have ever, ever been anywhere more beautiful than Knowlton? So Knowlton, if you haven't seen the video, Knowlton featured in our Dorset Lost Villages video, which I enjoyed immensely. It was good fun. Um, it was a remake of the Jack Hargreaves video um, with our take on it. Mm -hmm. And I, I can't tell you how much I love that day, the edit, putting it all together. What a day. All the Lim Limscombe churches, the, the church we saw, mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, I can't get enough of that. Not religious in any way what, whatsoever. No, but the architecture is amazing. Everything about that day, I loved. All the old old villages on the maps that we found, mm. why they moved. 
If I could make videos like that every day of the week, I would, because that was just a, a joy to make. I've sidetracked. Knowlton, yes, there are more beautiful places in Knowlton, but it was beautiful, so I'll give <laughs> you that. It was beautiful. <laughs> question section number two, personal questions. It pertain to you and I, Rebecca. You've not seen any I'm of these. I've not seen any Shall I not show you the pad? I'll just read the question out. No. Really? Question number one. How did you meet? We're not, gonna ask, we're not going to answer that. We're not going to answer that. We're, gonna... <laughs> we're never going to answer that. If you're a Patreon or a YouTube member, which we don't want to promote too much, but we do want to promote quite a lot, become a Patreon, become a member if you like what we do and you want to support the channel because then we do a lot of chat in the Discord group and we try and do extra videos behind the scenes and we do talk about those things a little bit more. We can do live chat. We do live chats. We do chats live chats. Stuff, and so, yeah, yeah you know, I normally get completely plastered and... Um, I say all sorts of weird things that no, I don't talk. No, he doesn't, he doesn't even drink. <laughs> um, David Lowry. Did you have, or do you have an academic background? Not really. No, I mean, went I... Went to school, went to college. Went to school, went to college. <laughs> I, I got a degree, I went to university because we did back when we were my age because it wasn't expensive in any way, shape or form. Mm. That life would have changed now if I was a kid now, I'm sure. But academic no we don't really we've kind of just self-taught in terms of the editing and the research um we've got a lot of very very kind people that email us and help us uh, guide us in things like archaeology stop it do you, can you see for the paper <laughs> <laughs> how do you think i read the first question <laughs> do you guys ever go on holiday you must need a break well, weirdly enough... Sorry, that was David Vincent. Weirdly enough, no, no, because when we go on holiday, we go filming. <laughs> we do, don't we? When we go, we, we go on holiday, we go to Scotland, we go, oh, no, let's film, we can film five videos in this holiday. Yeah. So we don't really have a holiday as such. We do, do we? try to make sure we don't squeeze every day in. Our main holiday uh, is kind of not really a holiday, it is a holiday, with the kids, which is next week. So, or which actually isn't next week now, because you're probably watching this after that. Whatever. Anyway... That's our kind of holiday, yeah. even though we've got the kids. Tim Dore, we love Tim Dore. Tim Dore is a um, sort of a Wiltshire landscape type person. Sorry Tim, that's probably completely undermining what you do. Tim Dore says, who's a better map reader? He is. Really, do you think so? What do you really do you oh, think uh, well, so? Last time okay. I read a map... No, I'm going <laughs> to try, try, and, try and be fair about this. When we're out in the field... Yep. I'm the better map reader, I'll agree. Yeah. When we're like, right, which way do we go here on the pathway, blah, blah. When we're at home and we're trying to look at an OS map compared to an old map. Oh, okay. I'll and we're sort of bringing kind of them meeting. together. Yeah, okay. You help me a lot more. Yeah, and true. I go, oh yeah, that. And then you go, no, 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 that bit's there and that bit's there. So per perhaps you're maybe a little bit more logical than I am with terms of looking at a map mm -hmm. when we're sat at a desk going, right, how, do we, how does this relate to that? Where Where's is your that? better um, directional? Lots of people ask, so I'm not going to read out any names, lots of people ask, what colour hair are you going for next? Well, theoretically brown, because I'm going out, <laughs> <laughs> going back to my original colour. Well, I, I don't even know that. What are you doing next? I don't know. Because you love changing up, don't you? Yeah. A few people ask, where do the kids go when you film? Well, number one, we have time when we don't have any of them, because your kids go to your... But, um, your ex and my kids go to my ex. Um, so that that well, we don't have any kids between us. No, we don't. So therefore so we do get that. easier. Yeah. Um, but my kids are old enough to stay at home by themselves. If we go out for the day. If we go out for a day. So it's not the end of the world. And mm. same with half of your kids, which is now half here. So yep. all good. All good. Is this your full-time job? No. No, it's not. Basically. No, no. <laughs> Simple as that. Yeah. There's times when it could be, we'll come to that at the end of the uh, video in the last section. But no, it's not a full-time job. We've got a full-time job. We kind of see YouTube as a... Um, still a hobby, hopefully a hobby that pays its own way in terms of mm -hmm. the stuff we do, but it's not our full-time jobs. No, um, I run a little family business and you do a hundred and million other things, including... Um, oh. You can't think of anything now. Really, I, well, no, but you do a lot, a lot of, sorts of, of, lot of, yeah. lots of stuff going on that, that is definitely considered a job because you pay tax, etc. Exactly, et I do, yeah. So yeah, it's all good. Yeah. T asks, do you do guided walks? Here's another thing about our Patreon and our YouTube members, not that we do guided walks for our Patreons and YouTubes, but we do meet them from time to time whenever they sort of are in the area or we're in their area. Um, we don't do guided walks as such for, for them, but we do go out with them and they take us out on occasion as well. 
but what I was going to say was, obviously, we do guided walks locally, don't we? Like, yes, we do we've done like a, a few Andover ones. Yeah, a few Andover ones, transport ones, uh, town ones. Mm -hmm. So if you're local to us, then yeah, you can get involved with that by our local social media. No, not a lot has asked when we get our when will we get our OBEs. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a uh, score, right? Long time we, for that. <laughs> honestly, I feel that we just make videos that we put on YouTube. We don't mm -hmm. make YouTube videos, we make videos, we put them on YouTube. We're not historians. We're far too broad to be considered historians. Yes, we get a good feel for how things were, um, the lives that people lived. We get a good general feel for all the topics we cover, but we're not historians because to be a historian, I would certainly think you need to be an academic you need to have studied for years you need to be a real scholar on the subject we know a lot of historians yeah. but we're not historians ourselves so i don't think we do anything that would even come close to sort of any accolade if that makes sense i'm not talking about obes obviously but i'm talking about we just put films together yeah. and we, we film our lives as a vlog or as a film it's it's not you know there's people out there who we admire Take for example David Nash and his team who did so much work, years of work on Stonehenge and where the stones came from. Mm -hmm. We made a video on the back of that. Yeah. We shouldn't deserve any kind of accolade for that. We just picked up and rode the wave of what they did. So that's not us going, oh my god, aren't we great? Look what we did. We no, literally just talked to like, David. Yeah, that's interviewing him. Interview sort of interviewing. Thing. So yeah, in my head, there's the people that look after Crofton, for example. We did a video on Crofton beam that's engines. Amazing. Again, that's not us. But we made a video on it and we enjoyed our day and we had fun. Mm. So it's not for us to get accolades, it's for us to just enjoy what we're doing yes. and show you guys what we what what is out there. Mm. Okay, I think that is it for personal questions. Three section three YouTube questions. I can't tell you how often we get asked by people online, email, comments on Twitter, YouTube, personal life. People say, Oh what how do you do this on YouTube? When did you guys do that on YouTube? Can you earn money on YouTube? Can you do this on YouTube? Can you do that? So many different questions. So like, do you know what? Let's just chuck a bunch of questions in. <gasps> you're nicking the paper. I am nicking the paper because you're the one that's going to answer most All of right, so these, the question, section three, questions based on YouTube and life on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. Go. How long does it take to make a video by Ken Gilbert? Oh, shortest video we've ever made probably took me four hours to edit and two hours to film, which was the uh, funicular oh, video yeah. we did in Hastings. Yep. So we filmed that, probably took us two hours tops. Yeah. And it probably took me four, four and a half hours to make. So, that's this, so six or seven hours is the quickest that we will ever make a YouTube video. Longest video we've ever made, probably something like um, either the channel tunnel videos how not to build a tunnel to france that was a long day or the um church video the lost villages of dorset video i don't think that was as long a day it was still a long day yeah but i but think the channel tunnel one was the maybe longest day. because it, we, we started filming and this is just filming we started filming about eight o'clock in the morning we finished about seven o'clock in the evening mm -hmm. so all of a sudden you got 11 hour day but then it took days and days of research evenings of research mm -hmm. So you've got all the research, you've got all the filming and the planning, then we have to piece it together. And I think it took me probably eight, nine hours to put together. Mm. Then I think um, we, were, we were gonna promote it and produce it. So there's all that to consider. So that video, although it did very well, that probably took a good three or four full days, yeah. um, basically. Oh. What camera do you use? Uh, Canon 8D, you're watching watching through now, Canon 8D. Yep, That's the, good for the microphone and the visual. Yeah, and the GoPro Hero 10 we've got at the moment with mod. GoPro Hero 10, which is great because you can film in wet weather yeah. and you can move it around quick and it doesn't judder badly. That's very good. It smooths yeah. things out for you. Um, and we use a, if you want a drone recommendation whilst we're on the topic, yep. DJI Mini 2. Utterly wonderful pieces of kit for 600 quid, which is an absolute bargain. Do Eric Jones, sorry if I've mispronounced that. Knowing the skills you have learned, how would you now change things in your first videos? That's a great question. That is. So how would you change things now? Oh, everything you would make tighter. Yes. First, first big thing you'd make tighter. Cut, 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 cut. Yep. Make things tighter, make things quicker, punchier. Um, have fun and enjoy it. I don't think that we didn't ever do that. We didn't did not do that from the start. Make things tighter. Yeah, tightening the edit basically. Tell a story, good introduction, um, what are you doing, 
straight on it. Yep. Uh, do you make money on YouTube and how? Yes, you do make money on YouTube. It varies a lot. I, I don't like the videos where it says, how much money do you make from 100,000 views? How much money do you make from a half a million views video? Because it's so subjective. It depends on a hundred different things. It depends on what time of year it is. YouTube pays more towards Christmas because obviously the Christmas ads pay them more. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on how many mid-rolls you put in. If you put mid-rolls, it depends on so many different factors. Depending on your content. So you can't just say from a 500,000 viewed video, I earned this because it doesn't work like that. No. Um, the more mid-rolls you have, the more you earn, but then you're inclined maybe to put more people off of your video. But Don't you know. also can't have a mid-roll um, in a video shorter than eight minutes i believe yep, very true. And so for example on my channel i don't have mid-rolls because i my all my videos tend to be short a lot yeah. shorter so in terms of the basics yes you can earn money from youtube you earn money through advertising revenue that they make because mm -hmm. they put adverts at the beginning of your video yep. that's a hundred percent a revenue stream we also obviously have patreon and youtube members which helps us uh, run the channel yep. helps us pay for the channel and then and that's another way of doing it. Sponsors as well. And yes, yeah, sponsored occasional ads. We try and not have more than one a month uh, because we don't. That's how we would like it. We've had a few more recently actually, but that's because we got crammed with a lot of um, offers that we don't normally get. And just on that note as well, um, because I'm somebody had mentioned this once before in the past. Yes, we do pay tax on what comes in. Have so we? you have to yeah, in way way back somebody oh, mentioned right. that. So yes, you, um, basically we 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 have to do our own tax forms on top of us working on our regular job. Andy P says, how do you feel about being described as a YouTuber? Um, I'm always a bit embarrassed by it, really. Sometimes, sometimes, yeah, always a bit embarrassed by it. Basically. In my head, a YouTuber are those gamers. Yes. And Mr. Beast. A YouTuber. And things yeah. like that, do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> in, YouTubers. My, in my head, a YouTuber is someone that makes YouTube videos, right? Yes. That sounds really silly. You make videos and put them on YouTube. Yeah. So I kind of think I'm not. We're not YouTubers, but okay. we are. But we're not YouTubers because we make videos and film video productions, makers. and then we put it on YouTube. Yep. That's kind of the way we see it, which is which is a silly way of doing it because at the end of the day we're on YouTube. It's true. How do you deal with the YouTube comments? How do you deal with YouTube comments? We laugh at them. Basically, yeah. If you mean trolling YouTube yeah, comments, yeah, yeah. not obviously. Totally. Everything. Here's the thing. So YouTube comments. First 48 hours, a lot of love from you guys. 48 hours to a week generally are the people that say ah yes but did you know after a week you get the hate yeah that's when they go this is ridiculous who is that idiot behind the camera why can't he say the word free etc all those kind of wonderful comments yeah but now for me so i'm probably talking about but for mm. me it was always a case of it used to affect me when we started out and we had like four videos on the channel and someone would hate on a video but like, oh my god what have i done wrong oh god oh i thought i did good on that video and this guy this guy said he didn't like it and you used to really think about that comment. Mm. But now it's just fun. Have fun with it. Because it's just like someone someone genuinely hates on you. You won't recognise their name. And you just think, oh, this is good. Because if the, if you're seeing a new name that's put a comment on there, that means that you, YouTube is showing more people. Why don't you make longer videos? Robert Ansel. Oh, I'm glad you said that because I can't read your hand right Sorry. <laughs> Why don't we make longer videos? We, we kind of make videos as long as we think they need to be for us. We've got a lot of plans to make. A big video but our videos will always be eight minutes to 16 minutes ish as a general rule of thumb mm -hmm. because I think that just kind of fits with what we do and how we do it yep. um, but again you you know there's a lot of people that we know uh, Martin Zero mm -hmm. excellent youtuber and he makes videos at 30 minutes long 40 minutes long and you kind of sit and watch it sometimes you think mm, that's fine it, it, it was what it was it yeah. didn't need to be 10 minutes it didn't need to be two hours it needed to be as long as martin made it yeah because that works for him we're done this is our q a done that was it um this is us on holiday but not on holiday but on holiday but not on holiday but on holiday but not on holiday hope you've enjoyed it again if you like what we do sign up to our patreon because we've got a lovely little community of you guys that join us for the odd live stream more importantly behind the scenes videos and we go, we chat with you in the Discord groups. Mm -hmm. uh, we give you ideas and you give us ideas and you can ask us anything you like in there. All YouTube members, by the way. All YouTube members, yeah. YouTube they members get and the patrons get the same sort of benefits depending on your level. Although we don't really reward the higher tier people as much as we probably should do. But we still love you all the same. <laughs> right, thanks for watching, people. Uh, we will see you this time next week, probably, depending on when the video goes out. No, they'll see us. We won't You'll see, see that. You always say that. I know. Goodbye.
Shall I switch the camera off? Yeah, how long did we do this for? I don't know, do, do, do you just keep going? Are you waving in my face? Does it end? Shall I just go? Face. Goodbye.